So we've also, uh, along with the master plan and the hole by hole booklet, um, and and all our work on the individual holes, you know, 118, we've also added uh, a potential short game area to the right of number two tees. There's a large, vast area, about an acre, um, where it sits in the corner of the property, um, where we want to move the short game area. Because right now the short game area is obviously left of nine, left of one, left of two in that triangle, where it sits under. Uh, four or five huge pin oak trees um, that constantly are dropping acorns and then obviously all the moisture is being sucked out by the, the tree roots and then it's getting no sunlight for photosynthesis to grow grass. So there's really no uh, good area there for a short game in the current location. So the area over there um, right of number two uh, we feel like could be a, a beautiful a spot for a nice big perch, kind of Ross S green, some bunkering, and lots of bent grass um, options. So you could hit anything from about 60 yards and in. Um, and we feel like that'd be a great spot, kind of tucked away in the corner. Um, I know you're you are a big fan of that corner. You, mm -hmm. You, uh, what are your thoughts on that, Kyle? Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, it's a tremendous opportunity to really give uh, everybody at the club a, a great place to practice, as opposed to kind of an afterthought green as as, as we have now. You know, uh, um, and really trying to get to to where the players can hit more of the kind of shots they're going to experience out of the golf. There's a big area of, of tight mo out there, and uh, and a couple bunkers where you can only practice and whatnot. And uh, um, and it's going to be a really beautiful place to practice. It's a wonderful view out of, uh, of the foreground bunkers on number two, and out to the creek out there. Uh, so I can think it, see it becoming a very a very uh, popular hangout here at the club. Right, right. We can always screen some of the houses as well because people might say oh you're over there in the corner by the houses but we can always put some laurel cherries some hollies um you know something that fits into the connecticut scenery um you know that kind of just slightly softens the view of the houses mm -hmm. and a perfect segue tyler you know that's one thing that we worked on very hard in the plan both around the driving range and the clubhouse we do have quite a few uh areas of plantings and whatnot to where you know the uh the entire property line or at least the most appropriate sections of the property line uh, are screened where you just get that beautiful connecticut backdrop like you have in so many other sections of the uh of the golf course so really worked hard on the landscape plan it's not all about removal out there it's also about just trying to make sure that the entire uh, uh, property package is, uh, is firing on all cylinders and as beautiful as it can possibly be. Right, right. We don't want it to always, we don't want people to have it this connotation that we're just here for tree removal <laughs> and, and axing everything we see. Mm -hmm. we, we're really thinking long term and we even have an arborist on our team, um, you know, that we think about plant specimen and proper locations for planting trees and, and uh, kind of landscape plantings. But it should be maybe thought of as like a 10 to 15, 20 year tree management plan for the mm -hmm. overall property, where we wanna slowly screen the perimeters and the unsightly parts of the property, but then also highlight you know, the uh, topography and the great land that you have with you know, denuding some of the property. But we also, you know, um, we're not just trying to cut down everything in the interior part of the property. We're still, we, you know, we're not adverse to leaving some specimen oaks and then also even planting some street strategic um, you know, oaks, elms, uh, great hardwoods for the future in locations that are off of the fairway, you know, enough. So when we're thinking about 80 years from now, they're not mm -hmm. into the middle of the fairway. Um, but so, so really strategic planting for the future, strategic, uh, strategic tree management. Um, so, you know, 50 years from now, we leave a legacy of a spectacular golf course, but that's also treed and planted correctly for the future. <laughs> And that's what you really get when you do really great tree removal is, uh, is you highlight the ones that are your best specimen trees and you really give them the opportunity to be showcased and also to, to grow and be healthy without being encroached upon by other dense trees. That's something that is very common as trees getting planted very close together. And that really takes us into, you know, as architects, our nature is to, is to jump to the, to the playability aspects first, but really the heart of, 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 our, of our initial feelings on tree management and vista pruning was really to get John and, and, and his wonderful maintenance team the opportunity to really have enough sunlight and air movement in the most important places out there. So agronomically, they're firing on all cylinders as well, really give them the, the right growing uh, opportunity to where you have perfect turf day in and day out through, throughout the season.